All right, so now let's talk about Adams, a Federalist, and also our second president. When you think of Adams as presidency, you should automatically think of four things. The first of the four things is the XYZ affair. And during the during Adams' presidency, Adams sent American diplomats to France to ease over tensions and establish a stronger relationship with France. However, France and Britain were fighting at the, at the time, and America was really trying to play both sides and be friends with everyone. What a shocker. But um, France didn't like this and had three secret French agents, Agent X, Agent Y, and Agent Z. And they basically demanded bribes from the American diplomats. America felt disrespected, and this almost led to war between U.S. and France. But, you know, it didn't happen. But it almost did. All right, so the second thing you should think of when you hear about Adams are the Alien and Sedation Acts. The Alien and Sedation Acts permitted uh, the deportation of foreigners who were thought to be a threat to national security. The Alien and Sedation Acts also made it illegal for people to write falsely and, and maliciously against the government. The sedation part of the act was uh, clearly against the First Amendment, freedom of speech, you know. But it was considered necessary for the success of country. Uh, the Alien Sedation Acts are today frowned upon because um, they're just referred to as the Federalist Party's witch hunt against all opposition. Um, because it was basically a way that the Federalist Party used to kind of, you know, keep the um, the other party, the Democratic Republicans, in check so that they couldn't write anything against them. Because remember, the president at the time, Adams, was a Federalist. Uh, the third thing you should think of when you hear Adams are the Virginia and Kentucky, and Kentucky Resolutions of 1798 and 1799. The Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions were a reaction to the Alien and Sedation Acts because it allowed the states to nullify or ignore uh, the Alien and Sedation Acts. Nullify just means ignore, by the way. Um, the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions were written by Madison and Jefferson, who were Democratic Republicans. Since the sedation part of the Alien and Sedition Acts prohibited them from saying anything against anything negative about the opposing party in power. Um, also, Virginia and Kentucky resolutions weren't approved by the national government. The concept of nullification is revisited later when we discuss the Civil War, which is pretty important. And nullification plays a huge role in the Civil War. Um, the fourth thing you should remember is um, Adams' midnight appointments of Supreme Court justices. Uh, the Constitution says it's the president's job to pick who gets to be a Supreme Court justice. So before Adams' term ends, um, he actually picked the Supreme Court with judges that support that supported his Federalist platform. He basically packed the Supreme Court with all the Federalist judges he could think of. Um, it's also important to remember that, that the election of 1800 is often called the Revolution of 1800, just because this, this was the first transfer of power from one party, the Federalist Party, to another, the Democratic Republican Party. Uh, this is important because back then there was usually bloodshed in, in other countries when power was transferred from one party to the other, and the fact that it wasn't, there was no bloodshed, it was a peaceful transfer of power between party to party is pretty important, that's why it's called the revolution of 1800 all right so next we're going to talk about the jeffersonian republicanism um 1800 through 1816 and jefferson was you know this whole jeffersonian republicanism era of 1800 through 1816 is basically democratic republics it's another name for republicanism is democratic republic that's a party name uh jefferson was a democratic republican he supported agriculture and made policies promoting an agrarian america rather than a commercial one uh during his term supreme court chief justice john marshall who um uh, he established judicial review in the supreme court case marbury versus madison of 1803 uh judicial review is basically the idea that supreme court has a right to declare laws unconstitutional um marshall court basically um, refers to the time when John Marshall was Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, which was between 1801 and 1835. Um, since Marshall was a Federalist, his court rulings favored the federal government rather than states' rights which is obviously in con in contrast to Jefferson, who was a Democratic Republican. And um, Jefferson is most remembered for the Louisiana Purchase of 1804. Uh, more than... 
he basically more than doubled the size of the U.S. with a simple stroke of a pen, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Um, his original intent was just to get at just just to get control of the port of New Orleans, but Napoleon Napoleon Bonaparte, the ruler of France at the time, had too many problems in his own country to worry about, so he just gave over the whole landmass to Jefferson, and just like that, overnight America was like more than doubled in size. Um, upon gaining all the new land. Land, Congress uh, funded the Lewis and Clark expeditions to explore the new land. Specifically, they helped establish claims of the Oregon Territory. Um, the War of 1812 was a result of Britain and France fighting. The British were stopping U.S. merchant ships to look for British naval deserters, often forcefully. Uh, they often forcefully took American citizens from the ships under the, imp under the impression they were British. And this searching and this searching of ships and seizing of American sailors is called impressment. Uh, in addition, the French restricted trade and seized U.S. cargo ships while they were in the French harbors. Jefferson really wanted to avoid a war, so he passed the Non-Intercourse Act of 1809, which basically made it illegal for American merchants to trade with France or Britain. But the act, um, it, the act was not supported by the New England since uh, their livelihood was basically based on merchant trading and the Southerners and Westerners supported the act because they felt like their national integrity was questioned. Um, Warhawks War Hawks were the Westerners and Southerners who supported a declaration of war against Britain. Um, the tensions caused by impressment built during Jefferson's term but resulted in war during Madison's term. <clears throat> um, the um, the only battle during the War of 1812 that's worth remembering is the Battle of New Orleans. Um, General Andrew Jackson won the Battle of New Orleans. Uh, the War of 1812 ended with the signing of Treaty of Ghent of 1812, and both sides accepting is, accepted a stalemate, which basically means they both kind of like gave up. That's what stalemate means. There was no winner. It was just a tie. Um, however, however, news of Jackson winning the new the New Orleans battle and signing of the Treaty of Ghent reached people at the same time. You know, since back then there weren't really any media networks like CNN or NBC or any big news televisions that can instantly deliver information. So people were just traveled by mouth. So thousands. Thousands of people lived with the misconception that America had won the war because it won the Battle of New Orleans. And because of that, you know, Andrew Jackson was like was revered as this big war hero. Um, the War of 1812 caused the nation to split between the North, who didn't want the war, and the Westerners and Southerners, who wanted the war. The Federalist Party was also against the war and organized at the Hartford Convention with the aim of convincing Madison. The Madison was the current Democratic Republican president at the time. Um, they basically, you know, got together at the Hartford Convention and wanted to end the war. And however, uh, the the Hartford Convention took place. Ju just as the Treaty of Ghent was signed and the Americans were under the misconception that America won the war, so the Federalist Party were basically scolded and they were considered traitors and they completely collapsed due to lack due to um, the lack of support after the war because they were they basically didn't support the war and the Hartford Convention happened just as the Treaty of Ghent was signed and people were under the impression that America really won the war. So <laughs> that sucks for them. <laughs> All right. So that concludes this this video. And next we'll talk about the era of good feelings and then Andrew Jackson. All right. Bye.